Let's take a look at how to add products through a CSV file. Remember to get a template by exporting your product list out first, and after doing so, you can remove all of the information except for the header row. It's time to add a new baseball cap product. First, we give the product a name and fill in the handle. Remember, the handle must not have spaces in it. I'll attach a unique SKU to this product and give it a description. This product is a cap, so I'll add it to the cap product type column. As we are editing a standard product, I'm going to remove the variant columns and focus more on the columns I know we'll be needing for this product. We give this product some tags. Remember to include a semicolon in between each tag. Next, be sure to add a supply price, and if you know what you're selling it for, add the retail price too. If you wanted to base the retail price on a markup off the supply price, you can answer this formula I'm showing now. The loyalty value can be included. Otherwise, if left blank, the default ratio will be attached. The tax name and value must have a name included. If you would like, you can type default tax in the cell. Otherwise, if left blank, the default tax will be applied. Remember, if you have a tax exclusive store, there will be different fields from the ones that you can see here. Your individual outlets will show up and you can apply the different tax rates to each store. If you're integrating with an accounting platform like Xero, you can override the default sales mapping by filling in the account code field. If you would like your product to stick to the default mapping, just leave these fields blank. Next up, we can add our brand name and supply name. In this case, the brand and the supply are both EBITS fields. If our supplier needed a specific code, I can include that here as well. Otherwise, they will see the SKU information when we order with them. The active and track inventory fields are very important. They are binary fields, so you would add a one for yes and zero for no. Active will mean the product is sellable, from the moment you add it to your system and track inventory, we'll focus on physical product inventory management, rather than a service you offer, which obviously wouldn't need any tracking. Our individual outlets will not have the initial inventory levels. We recommend to run a stockholder after you add your products to your store. What we can do is fill in the reorder point and restock level fields. In this case, I set 10 as the reorder point or low stock level and 30 as the reorder amount or restock level in each outlet. Coming back to the start, it's always best to scan your CSV and check that your mandatory fields such as SKU are filled in. Also, check to see if you have put any dollar signs in your retail price field and remove them if you have. We want to know that our active and tracking fields are filled in with either a zero or one and that any unnecessary comments have been removed from fields such as your tags. Once you've looked over your CSV, it's time to import. Remember to save the file as a CSV instead of an Excel file and then return to upload the CSV file.